Hey guys, it's Sartok from FTC Team 9794 Wizards.exe, and in this video, I want to quickly go through how you guys can use Vuforia to detect the different vision targets around the field, and also how to use Vuforia to identify uh, which uh, is this, which stone is the Sky Stone in Autonomous. That way, your team can select the right stone to score uh, the bonus points, the extra 10 points during Autonomous. Um, so why don't we just head right into it? So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Android Studio file, um, SDK for FTC SDK. Um, an important thing to note is that it ha uh, the SDK, in order for um, this video to work, you have to have the v uh, version 5.2 of the FTC SDK. And that's because the newest release of the S SDK, which was released on the Sunday after kickoff, um, has all of the resources that are necessary for running Vuforia with the vision targets in this year's game. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to um, go under the FTC Robot Controller module and then go under External Samples. And then you'll see an uh, op mode called Concept Before Your Skystone Navigation. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this file. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it over here. I'm just going to call it uh, Skystone Identification Sample. There we go, so our copy is there, and it's going to open up for us. And so there are going to be a couple things that we have to do um, in order to customize this op mode for our use. And depending on your robot and your design, you might have some different needs, so I'm going to show you how to change those options. Um, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get a Vuforia key um, in order for this to run the application. So this has to be your own personal Vuforia key. Um, I'm going to walk through the steps on how you can get one of those development keys. So I'm going to go to my web browser, and then you can just Google Vuforia Developer Portal. And in the first link, yep, it should be the first link that pops up. You can go ahead and click on that. Um, and then you'll have to log in or register if you don't have an account. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. Yep, so I'm going to log in. And then um, you'll see that I already created a project for this video, but what you want to do is you want to press Get Development Key, and then um, you'll type in the name for the license. Um, you see I've typed in this already, and you just have to check this box to agree um, to their terms, and you'll get your development key. So once you do that, it should bring you back to this page. You're going to want to click on the project, and then um, right over here, once you cl uh, click on this, it should copy it to your clipboard, just like that. And then we can go back into Android Studio and paste it right into that string over there. And you can see it's very, very long, but we need um, this in order for our Vuforia application to run on the FTC app. Um, now, the second thing that um, we want to be able to choose is which camera on the phone we're using. Because, as you know, most phones, they'll have a front camera and they'll also have a back camera. So we want to be able to use both of those. Um, for my personal choice, I'm going to choose the back, just because that's what makes sense in my current setup. But if you want to use the front, all you have to change um, is you have to change the back to front, and that should uh, be it. But I'm going to leave mine as back for now. I want to quickly walk through what's going on in the code over here. So you'll see that um, this is just the initialization code for the Vuforia. This is where we're loading all of the eight different targets plus the one target for the stone um, so that the it knows which targets to track. It sets the locations on the field so that it can get the XYZ coordinate. Um, and it initializes the rotation and camera positions in order to get a proper XYZ coordinate. So, um, yeah, that's about it for the code. So, once this is set up, uh, one thing you want to make sure is that um, you want to make sure that the Opmo is not disabled, otherwise, it will not show up in your um, driver station register. So, I'm going to go ahead and run my code. And nice thing with the new SDK is the code should only take a few seconds to do the Gradle build and run. Uh, so while that's downloading, what we want to do is, if you go into um, the Game and Season Materials Resource Library for this year's FTC game, um, you want to open up two files. The first one is going to be Appendix B for the uh, Game Manual Part 2, 
And then the second one you want to open up is, uh, where is it? The navigation targets. So I have both of those open up. So there are eight different navigation targets, which is in this PDF, as you can see. I'm just going to scroll through it a bit. And then the other one we want to go through is Appendix B of Game Manual Part 2, uh, Field Details. And you'll see that um, it has the sky stone image, which is the image that's taped onto one of the, sky, uh, the stones in the quarry. Uh, during autonomous so we want to be able to test if we can detect that so once you get those two things opened up and once your code finishes downloading we should be good to go i'm going to oh yep there we go uh, it has launched my activity and i'm just going to pull up a feed of my driver station phone and my robot controller so you guys can see what's going on Alrighty. so under your teleop menu you should see um, the sky stone before your navigation op mode and you can just go ahead and initialize that and on your robot controller phone you'll see that um, you have the camera preview starting to initialize so you can see what the camera should be able to see just like that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press play so it's going to start the tracking um, I want to go back into my web browser now and I'll pull up one of these vision targets and you should see that on the robot controller phone it's able to identify that target, so you can see it's getting that image pretty good in there. And then on the driver station phone, um, you should see that it's returning um, the w which target it is. It's giving you the name, and it's also giving you an XYZ coordinate, and also your orientation relative to the target. And you can see how those values are changing as I'm moving my camera around. So just like that, the values are still updating. Um, now I'm going to go over and open up the stone target, so you'll see that um, the robot controller is able to identify it. You can tell that because of the different axes popping out on the phone screen. And you'll see that um, it, the phone is telling you it's seeing the stone target, and it's giving you that X, Y, and Z coordinate. So now that we know that we can identify the targets, we want to use these three pieces of information the name, the position, and the rotation in degrees to be able to identify which stone is which. Now this process is going to differ for all of the robots out there, but I'm just going to give you some of the basic steps you'll need in order to get this done on your robot. So the first thing we want to be able to do is identify uh, which is the target we're seeing. So if we go back into our code over here, uh, what we can do is um, over here, right inside this for loop and inside this if statement. Um, we want to check, so what's going on here is it's iterating through all of the different targets. And then over here, it's checking to see if any of those targets are visible in the phone's current screen. So what we want to do is we can say um, if uh, trackable dot get listener dot get, um, Sorry, it's not. It's a trackable dot get name, and then we want to check if that equals stone target, since that's the one we're looking for during autonomous. Since it identifies which stone will give you the bonus points. Um, if so, if that's the case, we'll just add an extra line of telemetry, saying that um, the stone target is visible, and we should actually change this to telemetry.add line. There we go. And we can just go ahead and quickly download that onto our phone. And I'm going to, while that's happening, I'm just pulling up the robot controller and driver station feeds. And so in the next step, I'm just going to explain this while this is downloading, but will you start using the position information so we can see um, that it's getting the position information over here, the X, Y, and Z coordinate information, along with the rotation um, image. And we're going to use that, um, again, it depends on each robot, but especially this X coordinate, um, it changes enough that uh, depending on its value, we can figure out um, is it in the left, center, or right position uh, relative to the robot. We'll get into that in a bit, but first let's test out this bit of code since it finished downloading. So I have my target up, and I'm just going to pull up my robot controller phone. And so on my driver station phone, I'm just going to run the same program, Skystone v4 your nav. I'm going to initialize it. 
and you should see that it's still detected target like that. And I'm going to press play. Now, if I go into my driver station phone, oops, that's a robot controller phone. If I go into my driver station phone, you'll see this line saying that the stone target is visible. However, if I jump to a different target, that line disappears. So we know that we're able to detect and determine uh, what's the target we're looking at, and are we looking at the target that we need to, the Skystone target. So now that we have that working, I'm just going to stop the op mode. Um, what I'm going to do is go back into Android Studio, and I'm just going to make up some arbitrary bounds right now. But what we're going to do is uh, we want to get the X, Y, and Z information. So if the target is visible, which is what we want to check, um, we're going to say double X position equals translation dot get zero. So the translation is the vector object that um, is being returned from Vuforia. And this vector object um, is, an array, is a list with three different um, pieces of information. It's the x, y, and z coordinate in that order. So if I want to get the x, I have to say index 0. If I want to get the y, it's index 1. And if I want to get the z value, it's index 2. Um, so now that we have the x position, um, what we want to say, I'm just going to make up some numbers, but say um, we're going to make a string to hold the position of the sky stone. So I'm just going to leave it as an empty string for now. Um, but then what we want to do is say if x position is less than negative 10, then maybe the position of the sky stone is on the left, for example. Um, then maybe um, if it's not, then the position of the sky stone is in the center of those uh, th of the first three stones, since there are two targets, but um, I'm just looking at the first target. And then maybe if you can't see the target, then you know that the, um, whoops, I'm going to have to move this variable to the uh, scope of the whole uh, op uh, while loop. So then so maybe if the target is visible, then it can only be two possible ones, left or center. But if the target is not visible, so for example, if your camera is not pointing at the target, then maybe um, it's going to be the last option. So right. So we say position sky stone equals right. And then at the end of that, I'm just going to add a line showing which position it is. So telemetry dot add uh, telemetry dot add data. Say sky stone position. And then we can just put that variable in there. And that should uh, be good for us to go. So you can go ahead and download that code. And so keep in mind, I'm just going to say this again, I'm putting in some arbitrary number over here. You'll have to figure out for your team which is the right bounds to check. And if you can see all three targets at once, you'll have to go through mul multiple if statements to s evaluate whether it's left, center, or right. But right now I'm operating on the assumption that negative 10 is our bound if it's left or center and that our camera can't even see the right stone to begin with. So, of, of the first three stones. So, of the first three stones. So, that's how I'm going to assume it's working, but then again, it depends on your robot and your robot navigation during autonomous. So, I'm going to pull up the target and also my robot controller phone. So, once that gets started up, we'll run the op mode. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize Skystone before your nav. Uh, when you initialize it, oops. Yeah, when we initialize it, um, there we go. So once we initialize it, it should show us the camera preview. I'm going to open up the Skystone target. Now I'm going to open up my driver station phone and press play. And so you'll see that um, the x value is negative 10, so according to our code, um, it's saying that the sky stone is on the left. So in the perspective of the robot, in which I'm thinking about, the left is the first sky stone in the line that makes up the quarry. But then if you move your phone over this way, you can see that values start to decrease. Sorry, increase. Let's try and get a value that's... There you go. So you can see that since it can't see any of the targets right now, that the sky stone position should be right. So that's true. Let me see if I can get a value that shows it's in the center. Hold on. Let me check our bound again. 
So it should be, if it's less than negative 10, if it's left, so let's try and get it greater than negative 10. Uh, let me pull up my driver station phone. It looks like I'm not able to get it to the correct value for a long enough period of time. But you can see that's how the logic of the code should work. Um, and that should give you the basic building blocks to use Vuforia in your autonomous to um, identify the correct sky stone and find its position using that X, Y, and Z information. And you'll have to, every robot will have different drive code and the different steps to get and collect that sky stone. But this gives you the basic information and the basic logic you need in order to find uh, where it is at least before you start driving to the sky stone to collect it and bring it across to the other side. Um, that about wraps up, wraps up this video. Um, if you guys have any questions or um, concerns or need help with some troubleshooting, uh, you can let us know in the comments or also send us an email and we'll get back to you and help you resolve that issue as soon as possible. Um, stay on the lookout for more vision videos, um, whether it's with Euphoria or also the Doge CV Vision Library. We'll be putting some more videos out soon. And also take a look at our upcoming odometry video series. Uh, we're going to be releasing a couple parts for the wiring and the software pretty soon. Um, those are really cool, so you should check them out. Please don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Uh, sub like the video and subscribe to our channel. Um, and thanks for watching. One quick thing I forgot to mention in the video is the small changes you would have to make if you want to use a webcam instead of the phone camera. And I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. It's a real simple process. So if you remember how we started out the video, um, we copied and pasted uh, this concept, Euphoria Skystone Navigation. Instead of doing that, um, if you want to use a webcam, you would make a copy of this concept file, um, concept Euphoria Skystone Navigation Webcam. And really, uh, the only the, you have to go through the same exact process. You have to copy and paste your key right over here. The only difference is that you have to make sure you configure your webcam. So you have to put the name in over here. And um, make sure that on your robot controller phone, you when you plug in your webcam to the USB hub, you just scan and add the webcam um, into uh, your robot configuration. If you are unsure on how to do that, um, we released a video in May on how to use an external web camera for vision. If you look through the first part of that video, it just show you how to configure it properly.